known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As you surely know by now, I used to play in a band for a living. And in our band, we had a saying. If you have to explain your songs before you play them, you should probably just write better songs. <laughs> Truly great songs speak for themselves, and explaining them runs the risk of ruining them. That's kind of how the lessons are for this Sunday. If I stand up here and tell you why the story about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch is a great story, I honestly think it takes away from how great the story is. Likewise, if I try to explain the reading from 1 John about love and how God loved us first, and that's what makes us able to love one another, and, well, I think it would only be a distraction from the power of that little snippet of that letter. And then there's the Gospel reading. You know, Jesus and the vines and the branches and all of that. Powerful imagery and, to be blunt, kind of obvious, right? Branches cannot grow unless they're connected to the vine. Jesus is the vine. So, amen. <laughs> My point is this. Over-explaining any of these readings is not going to be helpful. And in my view, runs the risk of taking something away from them. And so, this Sunday, I'm just going to offer a few observations about the lessons and then talk about y'all. In the first reading, from the book of Acts, the Ethiopian eunuch has gone up to Jerusalem to worship and is on his way back home. An Ethiopian eunuch would not be allowed into the temple to worship for two reasons. He's Ethiopian and he's a eunuch. A double outcast has gone to worship anyway, even though he will be rejected from the assembly. And in the person of Philip, at the prompting of the Spirit, God comes to him anyway. And in such a powerful way that he asks to be baptized that very day. From total outcast to Christian disciple during one short chariot ride. And all because the Spirit led Philip to the right place at the right time. Philip's will was aligned with the will of God. In the second reading, from 1 John, it's all just a riff on this idea. God is love. When we abide in God, we abide in love. And abiding in love leads to all sorts of great things, like serving our neighbors and finding that fear has been cast out. The point is not that we love God, but that God loves us. And the reason we love at all is because God first loved us. The Spirit leads us as the Spirit led Philip, and then God does what God does, because God is love. And any time we make a promise, it is always accompanied by the phrase, with God's help. Apart from God, we can do nothing, which leads us to the Gospel reading for today. Jesus is the vine, you are the branches. 
This is a pretty obvious analogy. But here's a case where it's important to look at the actual words as they are recorded. We lose something in English because we don't have a way to make the word you into plural. Well, unless you're from the South, in which case you've got y'all to work with. And come to think of it, let's do that. What Jesus is saying here is, I am the vine and y'all are the branches. Y'all remain in me and y'all bear fruit. Why is that important? Because it is not about individuals having a personal relationship and being hooked into Jesus. It is about the community of believers remaining connected to Jesus. Jesus says, apart from me, y'all can do nothing. Apart from Jesus, our parish can do nothing? Well, that's not true, right? If we didn't have Jesus, we could still gather in this space and we could have festive dinners together and we could even collect food and donations for our neighbors in need. We could still do good works without Jesus, right? The Rotary and the Elks and the JCs, they do the same kind of thing. Well, maybe what Jesus is saying is that those kinds of good works, that kind of fruit, will be gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. For us, those who have been cleansed by his words, as he says, the value of what we do comes from being connected to Jesus together. We could spend a whole bunch of time being busy and active and doing things, but if we are not connected to Jesus, those things are pointless. They will be gathered up and burned. And then here comes the amazing part, the tricky part, the part that makes us go, what? Jesus says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. It's tempting to take this to mean, if I remain in Jesus and I ask for a new bicycle, I will get one tomorrow. If you abide in me, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Okay, I wish to win the lottery this afternoon so I can give all the money to St. Timothy's Church so we can fix up our building and start new programs so that we can continue to abide in you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Seems like a slam dunk, doesn't it? Something we want for all the right reasons, rooted in the continued abiding in Jesus. But what's missing here is the plural. Our old friend, y'all. Doing things on my own isn't properly seeking the will of God because it requires y'all. If we want to do the will of God, we will inevitably run into this nagging question. What is the will of God? Every week together, we say in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Why are we praying for God's will to be done? It's kind of strange, right? Praying that the will of God would be done? This is us, the y'all, asking together that God's will would be done. And that's because we find God's will in community with other people. Way back before I ever went to seminary, the first step in that process was to go and meet with my rector a few times, just the two of us, sitting in his office. And how I hated those meetings. He asked very hard questions and he never told me whether I was answering correctly. But one question came up over and over because it was the point of our meetings. And that question was this, how do I know if becoming a priest is God's will? How can I be sure? The answer, simple and yet as profound as can be, is this, if my will is aligned with God's will, then I want what God wants. And God's will is revealed in other people. If my will is the same as God's will, then I want what God wants. 
I go where God wants me to go. I will be who God wants me to be. And I can only know that in community. You could say, God's will is in the y'all. If we abide in Jesus, we will want what God wants. Or as Jesus says, those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Staying connected to Jesus is the key. Abiding in Jesus leads us to want what God wants. And so you're asking, how do we abide in Jesus? And the answer is, I will with God's help. In the promises we make at baptism, it is spelled out for us. And that is always done together, in communion, in the y'all. We renew our baptismal covenant together. We gather in worship together. And the baptismal promises we make are together with God's help. Now, since it is technically permissible to switch the Nicene Creed for the baptismal covenant, we're going to do that. So open your prayer book, the red book, to page 304. Page 304, and in place of the creed, we will renew the baptismal covenant. So I ask you, do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Lord, in your mercy, 
Receive our prayer. Show us, your human family, how to share and use our resources so that those in need and those with plenty may join together. Deepen our desire. Sharpen our will and intention to respect the dignity of all. We pray for those in this city, in our country, and around the world who suffer from homelessness or poverty, and those who cannot find work. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Inspire all in this community to learn to grow in our knowledge and love of you. Bless our relationships with one another, that we may speak and act in love, truth, and humility. Be in our praying, thinking, and all that we do, especially as we seek to expand our reach, that we may choose your will. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the joy of the resurrection and all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for the blessings we name now, silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Break the bonds of illness, addiction, despair, and loneliness by your healing power. We bring in prayer those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, especially this morning, Chris, Georgia, E.T., J., Tyler, Sally, Brad, Jean, Renee, Ralph, Matthew, Bill, Dale, Diana, Sarah, Susie, Wayne, Megan, Britt, Florent, Cynthia, Stephanie, Sam, Joe, and all those on our continuing prayer list. Deepen our faith, Lord, in your powers to heal. We pray for those we name now, silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Give rest, O Christ, to those who have died with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life never left. We pray for Lawrence Hahn, Caitlin Brantford Fellows, Pastor Scott Bacon, Global Carpenter, and Peter Eady. And for those that we name now, silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Almighty God, you raised up Jesus Christ, that the whole world may shine forth your presence. Open the eyes of our faith, and so infuse us with the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may bear witness to his name in all the cares and occupations of our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated for a few announcements. If you would like to make a flower memorial or dedication, Please call the church office. We have lots and lots of dates available over the summer and the upcoming months. Today the high altar flowers are given to the glory of God in memory of Lawrence Hand by Wanda Hand and the family. The chapel flowers are given to the glory of God in memory of Caitlin Fellows by Mrs. Dean Lawrenson and Steve and Christine Fellows. We are always looking for volunteers to sign up to bring cookies, brownies, small snacks kind of thing for coffee hour following this service. There's a sign-up sheet on the table right out there in the parish hall. If no one signs up, there's no snacks. So coffee hour today is coffee <laughs> and tea and probably some other beverages. But we don't have any snacks because nobody signed up. So it's kind of like a great example why we need you to sign up. 
So feel free to do so anytime. Thank you to the hearty souls who helped with the grooming of the grounds yesterday. We were a small but mighty group. They got a lot done. Your care and concern and addition to the beauty of our place is very appreciated. This very afternoon, our choir director, Andrew Bolden, will sing in a presentation offered by the McDowell Music Club at 3 o'clock right here in this room. Admission is free and it is open to the public. I heard them rehearsing yesterday and it's going to be a great recital. You should come to this. You should at least come for the second half. Come for the whole thing. Come for the whole thing. It's all you know. Three o'clock and there'll be refreshments in the parish hall afterwards. If someone brought. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. We're back to the sign up sheet again. Uh, okay. Next Saturday? Yes. Next. Next Sunday, next Sunday, a week from today, uh, we're doing our annual Blessing of the Bikes at Ernie's uh, Bike Shop, which is technically called the Trailhead Canoe Livery, Ernie's Bike Shop. Um, in the parking lot that's at the corner of Lake and the 21, essentially, um, if you have a bike and you plan on riding it this summer, bring it over. Uh, come to the 10 o'clock service, go home, get your bike, bring it back, and uh, we will bless the bikes together 1 o'clock at Ernie's next Sunday. A uh, week after that, Saturday, May 11th at 5 o'clock, we'll have our annual wine tasting and trading party. You can bring a bottle of your favorite wine to share, and if you like, bring a second bottle in a blind trade where you never know what you're going to get. Uh, everyone who attends is also asked to bring a snack to share if you are able. So that is next Saturday. And then, this week, as far as I know, there's only one birthday, and it belongs to Christine Streck. So, if you will look on the back of your bulletin, there's the birthday prayer. Let's pray together for Chris Strapp. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls. And in her heart, may thy peace passive understanding abide all the days of her life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, Christine, and glad you're home from the hospital. <laughs> she recently had surgery, and now she's back home and recovering just fine. That's probably a HIPAA violation. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Turning to page 366, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are the Thank you. 